Hey guys, it is Tim Oteo and Jaime, and this is Tabletop Terrors. And today, we're going to talk about building an encounter, and we're going to do one live right here. Stay tuned. We have another video that talks about the most important thing when you're building an encounter, or an adventure, or a campaign. Figuring out what your mission statement is. Okay, what kind of tone are you trying to accomplish? So, I want to build an... What? If you say the word tone, the first thing that pops in my head is, now tone I can get into. Now, that's important because it's not actually tone, it's tain, but it's tone now because we play Titanfall 2. This is such a deep rabbit hole. Oh boy. And I'm so sorry. Oh bananas. But I hope Matt watches this so he knows. This is for you, clickbait. I want to create an X using Y. And I want the feel to be Z. Right? So I want to create a combat encounter using zombies. And I want it to feel like a mystery. I want it to feel like suspense. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to kind of work through and do this live and show you what we're talking about. You and I have been on a kind of a Monster Hunter kick. Yeah. Dude, I need to get on your Steam and download Witcher 3. It's so good. I know. I don't want to spend the money right around oh, Christmas. Oh, man. It's so good. I right need... on sale. I know. Anyway, that aside. So how could we do this if our mission statement is Monster Hunter? How so do we I do wanna this? Build a, I want to build a Monster Hunter encounter. See, that's the thing is that this is why this is so important. I think that this mission statement is because there are so many different styles of Monster Hunting. In fact, if you want to get literal and technical, Pokemon is Monster Hunting. <laughs> well, yeah, that's why the, that's what the last part is important. For. Right, right. So, so what would you say the mission statement is? Well, what I'm saying is do you want it to be a combat encounter oh okay social encounter like what do you want it to be so skill skill challenge so I, I want to build a blah what i think the, it should be a combat encounter perfect so i want to build a combat encounter using monster hunting okay and like so, using the, the the as yet to uh, as yet unreleased monster hunting and dragon grin book that we're writing right so basically a monster but we don't know what it is yet yeah, something. So, uh, uh, okay, let's put it this way. This is a little specific, but because that's fine. A monster with a higher challenge rating than the players. Perfect. And uh, what a you, formidable monster. That's great. And what you did was fine. There's no like hard and fast yeah, rules yeah. here. You can say I want to, but I do think it's important to say that you should keep it succinct. Um, I wouldn't put uh, a challenge a uh, monster that's higher challenge rating than the players. I would just put a formidable monster. And then you want to say, and you want the feel to be the Witcher Three. <laughs> That's it. And it's that easy. And that's okay. That's awesome to pull from stuff that already exists. I think I, in the other video, talked all about how you should write that down so you can keep looking at it. Totally. I'm going to write it down. So you type that up. All right. So now what we need to figure out is, because this is a single encounter, it's combat. We want it to feel like monster hunting. So I want to build a combat encounter. Yep. um, Using a formidable monster. Yep. That feels like like the Witcher 3. The Witcher 3. Now, this is key because every idea that we have is allowed to exist on this little fake playmat, but it has to eventually line up with that mission statement for it to stay in there. Now, you said something even better, I think, in the video. You said line up just now, but Yo, man. pass through. Think of it as a net or a funnel. It is a cheese cloth. Where you're like, whatever you come up with, you should like slide it through that. Like, all right, so zombies. All right, how do I make them formidable? I don't know. That was a bad example. No, that's not a bad example. So How do I make it Witcher 3? Right. So to me, what that would mean is if you wanted to take zombies and put it through here, well, strike the pluralization. It's a zombie creature. Like a huge zombie diary. Something that's zombified. Now, I like that, but I don't want to go with that. No, no, no. But I'm just pointing out that that's how you take the idea and put it through the cheese cloth. And say, okay, well, when I like, I like zombies, how do I... Well, there it is. You line it up. That's why this tone and feel is so important. All right. Hit me with your best shot, John Jet. So Fire I'll away. Say, what, what's next? <laughs> well, I want you to pick the monster. I think that's probably a good idea. So. Um, or no, you don't have to do it right now. I guess that's the important thing. Well, go ahead. I was just going to say, there, that's really the most important thing is there is no order. We just need to end up with something. So it's whatever pieces you want to place... Actually, on the yeah, idea let's, table. let's place the rest of the pieces. Cool. So where is this happening? I just am a big fan of like little villages. 
Okay. That are plagued little by monsters. Village. Like sounds good. Little green village, buddy. So a little village at night. Like yeah. it's it comes at night. People are hiding in their homes, and you're uh, basically like a just an awesome witcher, and you're like, get in your homes. That's kind of the thing. I, that's yeah. what I'm Dude, imagining. Perfect. So yeah. Perfect. All right. So I hit that in the wrong spot. So we're gonna go um, location. We're just gonna say you need a location for this thing to happen. Yeah. Uh, location. Little Hamlet. Mm. Hamlet is the mwah, that's the little word. Hamlet night. <laughs> that I imagine. <laughs> I don't. We, that was we open on a carny. <laughs> He's a little confused. He's racked with guilt because he ate his brother's Ferrero Rocher candies. You're, no, here's the thing. You're and wrong I, already. I broke He's it. not racked with guilt for that. No, he's racked with He's pleasure. a carny. He's racked with chocolate. Okay, so that's the location. When you said Little Hamlet Knight, I just pictured a tiny little pig <laughs> in armor. <laughs> Guys. If I could draw, I would draw that. 2017. Which one of you is going to draw the webcomic Hamlet Knight? Yes. All right, so um, that's the location. All right, so that's kind of... Which already I'm starting to get ideas of Little Well... You know, villages with A-frame roofs, mm-hmm. candle in the window. <sighs> There's a monster about <laughs> that kind of thing. So, what next? What other piece do we need to place? Um, good question. Uh, well, what else would evoke this tone, this 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 feel, this flavor? Okay, actually, that's a good point. Ooh, full moon, full moon. I at this point, we're just placing pieces, right? We're using okay, that. So yeah, if, click if we're advice. placing pieces, we should write down. There's a little well. Yeah, I like Little it. Little well in the center. Of course. A-frame roofs. A-frame roofs. Roofs. I almost roofs. put a V. I don't know That's if fine. it's... Yeah, roofs. Roofs. Um, Runes. <laughs> um, and a cow pasture. Yep. You there gotta are, have There's the some cow. livestock. Brr. Probably the bait in this situation. Yeah, it's the bait. Cows are bait. Okay, so. So far we have a little hamlet... Um, the people are cowering in their homes. The players know that a monster is coming. In fact, they are baiting it, maybe with something special, but for now we're just going to say it's livestock. There are cows, and it's been preying on these, uh, and there's a particularly fat cow that they you expect it's going to yeah. come again. And this is important because, you know, and you can put this on here, which, again, this is going with the tone. The people, and I have right, it's everyone, the people need this livestock. This yeah, is exactly. life and death. This is, we'll say, in our world of Dragon Grin where... A cow is going to feed you for the fall or for, you know, like this is your entire food source. Exactly. So if a monster comes and eats it, it's not just like. And in particular, uh, in the Witcher specifically, Witchers, they're, part of their code is that they have to be paid. They do not do stuff to be nice. Um, so in my mind, these people have scraped together everything they can because they can't afford a new cow, but they can just barely afford the adventurers to hopefully get rid of this monster. I don't know if this should go in the notes, but I already imagine the mayor giving his gold tooth as the last bit of the payment. Dude, I'm in. So I don't know why, but I like that. Gold tooth as payment. Mm -hmm. So, um, so far, Little Hamlet, they're getting ready. We don't know what the monster is yet, but it is certainly stronger than the players. I wouldn't say necessarily smarter, but it is very smart. It's smarter than a regular monster. You know, it's not a, a beast that just eats stuff. Right. Um, it, it's cunning. Exactly. So, so we put that on there. To keep the tone, let's put cunning monster. Because we did put that it was formidable, but let's make sure that the people... Okay, it's cunning. So it's going to use tactics. Exactly. That's going to change the It's going to try to sneak up. Um, it's going to... It knows that somebody's waiting for it. It's not going to be caught by surprise. Totes. It's cunning. Um, so maybe we should put something in there. What can the players use? What What is the advantage the players have? They know the monster is coming, so they have some preparation. Yeah. So, like, what is it they have that's like, all right, so whether it's some sort of trap they've laid or maybe some sort of ambush that, I don't know. Here, I'm just totally spitballing because we want to make this an interesting encounter. To be clear, yeah. actually, this would probably be on the players to come up with something cool. Um, totally. But, yeah, that's actually a good point. So we're not going to do that. Well, you know, I was going to suggest... You can do something, but... Well, but in The Witcher, I've never played it, but you always tell me that they have these bits of lore, like they can find clues and tips on fighting the monster. Yeah. Right? So here's... The legend, the lore, that we're going to make it, uh, we're going to give it to the players to be smart here. Let them work with this however they want. But I like the idea. Mirrors are hard to come by in Dragon Grin. It's low fantasy. A mirror is an expensive object. Something with the monster's reflection. 
So it's not like a Medusa thing, but perhaps the monster's afraid of its own reflection. Something where you work that in and let that be so that the players could set up this town. But it's not easy to find reflective stuff. Exactly. So in this case, um, I think that I agree that that goes in there. But that is more to let you guys know. That is something that, yeah, you should see it early on in the adventure. Like, hey... You need to drop those clues so that the players can figure that out. Totally. And again, but, let them get creative. You, This is where putting the piece on the board, not knowing what it does, is okay. This is that click advice. Matt Click, this whole dice. You put a piece on the board, not knowing what it does, just throw out there that the lore is, this creature has a weakness in its reflection. Or because something. if the players say, I look for a mirror, it's up to you to say, it's going to be hard to find, but there's got to be a mirror in the town. Right. And if they come up with a cooler thing, like, oh, well, maybe the, it, they'll come up with a cool idea as to why the creature is afraid of its reflection. So or let, them, of, let them have that. Let them have that. That's for them. So I don't know. It may be that. that yeah, okay. So the monster, um, something with the reflection. Um, in some cases, uh, in regular lore, uh, basilisks... Um, you can't be, like, if you can see them in a reflection, but you can't look at them directly. Um, sure. I like the idea that it's scared of its own reflection, or maybe if you got it to think, basically, it's not necessarily the reflection exactly, but um, they're very territorial creatures. So if it saw another one of I its like own like, I creature, like that. It, there might be, it might be confused or get ready for a fight with one of its own creatures. It'll try to attack itself. Exactly. Right, which gives you that moment to find its real weakness or, exactly surprise you know, it or otherwise put get that arrow jump on it where you yeah. otherwise you wouldn't be able to Love so it. um we'll say afraid of reflection slash territorial because Perfect. i imagine that whatever i did not spell territorial right that's why red squiggles exist exactly so um in that case again that's something that you sort of seed the player somewhere but you let them do whatever they want with it sure um yeah. So then, I mean, is that basically an encounter outside the monster? Well, then, we, yeah. And I think that, to me, the cool thing we need to do is, because that's kind of setting it up, and everything's lining up with this tone and this feel, but now I want to add in the Tenenbaum, which is something I call, like, the Tenenbaum. That old, squirrely, the, the interesting thing where... I like to call it the Tilt. I the, stole that from... Fiasco. Fiasco. The Tilt. What's the rub? What's the thing that's like, okay, it's all good. You got your mirror set up. You got your ready for and it. And then... It shows up. Boom. Now what, baby? So what is it? Is the it that? The mayor's a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> and there's your encounter. The end. Boom. Um. Actually, I know you were kidding. I was, and then I was like, oh, wait a minute. He doesn't have to be a werewolf, but it would be super cool if the mayor's involved in the monster somehow. Yeah, okay. Or, like, it's a monster, but... It's a werewolf type situation where the monster is one of the townspeople. Sure. Like, and whether you see that or not, basically when they hit, hurt or kill it, it turns into a person and you're like, oh my god, I recognize them. They were the nice person at the beginning of the encounter. Which is cool. I want the monster to be bigger and scarier than that. So it has to be, well, I'm, I'm down with that, but I don't want it to be like canthrope size. I want it to be like... I imagine a like... Undead bear Not size. in the shape, but in the size of like a gorilla. But like a really, like if it stood tall, it would have a very, this is a terrible description, very no, long midsection. Like, yeah. In a sense that it would. Like that simian sort of like, yeah, short legs. Sort of, but like long. I said, not really, like it's not a gorilla. But in my mind, it's like this really weird creature, but it, it is on all fours most of the time. But it's like, it's like a stretched out humanoid. This is sure. not going well. No, that but like just sense. a weird, like. No, I like it. Creepy and, thing. But I, yeah, huge, I think it's cool. Huge monster. So, again, you can just place the piece, the mayor is involved. This is the key. You don't have to write like, well, the mayor, was, it was his cousin, it was his sister. And it was, it's like, don't do that. Let the players kind of build oh, correlations and, and play this out. But the mayor's involved. You, you have to have some kind of idea like the mayor's involved and he's protecting the townsperson. Or he's letting it happen so he gets reelected. And this, this is another, this is a little tip. I was reading the, the Dungeon Master's Guide recently and this is one of my favorite tips that I'll never forget. The best part, the, the way to do stuff like this, to, to seed these things, make sure other people have a secret. If the players, you know, this isn't necessarily this encounter, but the players are going in and they're, you know, trying to figure out what the thing is and nobody really knows, but this person might be lying or that person might be lying. Don't make the mayor the only one that's suspicious. Um, make someone else, I don't know, they're cheating on their wife. It doesn't matter what's happening, but there's some other pressure. And so they're lying about something, but no, not necessarily this. So the mayor is involved, but other people have secrets too. You know, maybe somebody 
killed someone and dropped him down the well, and they don't want you to find that out. They're like, hey, can you just kill the monster and get out of here? Because there's anything. another secret floating around. Exactly. So not so much about that's not so much part of building the encounter, but that's important in mysteries type games if you're dropping clues to make sure that not all of them necessarily all point to well, the mayor's a bad guy. Um, and that's I, I love that. And so to me, the Tenenbaum, the tilt is. And I like to try to do this, I'm starting to try to do this in all my encounters, which is, let's throw a skill-based element in there, especially if you're using Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition, or, I mean, you could probably tie this into Aspects if it was Fate. So, I don't want to get too muddled, but I want there to be a couple of things. So let's do something strength-based, where the players can use strength, to push around these movable... Maybe the mirrors are on carts. Is athletic strength? Yeah. It's the okay. only strength-based skill. Oh. It's the only one that you have... Right. But it's, that's like climbing and jumping. Yep. Okay, so I have an idea. Totally. There are these little Hamlet A-frame houses. Yeah. You've got maybe trellises, say. Sure. Basically, it's not so much a skill challenge as much as to get a leg up, the players can climb them and jump off to try and like stab the monster in the back or otherwise... Not necessarily get on top of it, but get an advantageous position. Maybe it gives them advantage on an attack roll. Sure. If they can get above it, whether they're shooting arrows at it or they're jumping onto it. The monster's weak spot is on the back of its neck. Yeah. It's it's spiny, it's armored, whatever. It's this crazy thing. It's the weak spot right there. They can't reach it easily. If you, can get- I like that it's like a... The monster is... It doesn't have any hair, but it's like flesh... But it's covered with like sort of a bone armor, like sure. a, a little bit of an exoskeleton. But I'm not talking bug. I'm talking like, like you said, like bones. You see, like, like this kind of stuff, spine spiny, stuff coming yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, totally. But very smooth. Not so much like Doomsday. So I'm like, just this, and it's like covered in like bloody goo. Sure, stuff. I don't definitely know. transformation status. Yeah, definitely. Like I turned into this thing because we're going in that like monster transformation thing. But I like that. Yeah, there's a weak spot, and basically. Through clues, if your players figure that out, they're then able to climb on these houses easily. Maybe that that maybe sure. that's a strength athletics. Yeah, it would be that probably that, or we could do like a dex if they want to like use acrobatics to kind of. But so this is the idea: make it dangerous for them to be on the ground. That's mm-hmm. the key. Okay, yeah. and so maybe that's something you work in there where the monster has this sort of attack where it, you know, is. Shooting these spines, these even though they're uh, blunt force, they're not. Oh like yeah, no, that's the thing. It can definitely. It's like, and it just. It's an area of effect that hits everyone around. Me. It goes. <laughs> so they start thinking, well, we got to get on these roofs. This is a cool encounter. <laughs> this is an awesome encounter. Here's this is the thing though, right? So I want to add this other crazy element, and you can make it so that they can move the mirrors on carts, which would be a strength check. If to well, here's kind of shepherd the monster around. That's what I mean. I'm like, there's gonna be a mirror though. I'm like, sure. Even if it's yeah, one, two, you can't players like, are clever. Uh, they might polish a tukus. No, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I just want to throw that out there as we kind of set it up that there's not everybody's not gonna have a mirror in their house. We can't. I'm just know. saying, players are crazy. They might be stringing together like candle bottoms that they candle holder bottoms that they polish. Whatever. The point is, is that. I want to add one final piece to this crazy puzzle. Maybe there's a spell. There's probably a spell that makes mirrors, whatever. So go ahead. Add right. a piece. I do, don't know. Do you even do Players. mirrors? What the hell? I want there to be another element that's way outside the player's control. And I don't know how to make this work. Work warband, put, baby. Put in the, <laughs> I'm sorry. I keep doing that. Putting the piece on the, on the, on the on idea the board. board. There's a player character. There's an NPC that the monster is related to. That draws it out. We're not using Dude, the cows for bait. Gotta, here's the thing. You okay. gotta do a charisma based check every round so that the NPC will listen to you and follow the plan. Okay. Basically you're it's a charisma check or intimidate, maybe. Or intimidate. Because you are like, hey, well, that's don't run based. away. Oh, it's charisma based. Right. I was thinking so, persuasion. Right, right. So you could do persuasion, intimidation, any kind any of charisma. In- gotcha. You're so right. So you've got to get the them and maybe again, let the players get creative. But set up the lore as, as such so that it's like this monster, its weakness is blah, or like you have to run it through a maze. You well, don't want to get too railroady. But here's the thing. We've set up already that this is probably a townsperson that transforms, or somebody, maybe they live in a cave that they went missing. That's less important. Mm-hmm. But it's that classic King Kong, they know somebody, or yeah. maybe not King Kong, but they're, who, what's that other one where they're like, oh, the Hulk. Hulk and Betty yeah, Ross. Yeah, exactly. Where it's like Betty shows up and they're like, whoa. That's the vibe. Betty Ross is here. 
But like you said, the NPC isn't like, yeah, no, I'm cool. I'm just going to stand up to no, this thing. No, coward. Like, Whoa. Coward. Don't want to be a part of it at all. And you have to do uh, – and you choose the DC of this, but it's like a DC-12. Depending on how hard you want to make this. And it this. probably – well, it could ramp up based sure. on if they How crazy damage. things get or disadvantage, whatever. But that's it is you figure out some way in this Rube Goldberg machine of an encounter – What's the NPC's role? And you have to use them to shepherd the monster somewhere. I don't know. Figure that part out. That's but, where your players like come in. Like you said, you put the piece on the board. That's it. You just put the piece on the board. And if they don't... Okay. Because this is going to come up before the encounter. They're going to talk to this person. They're going to maybe, if they take the time to talk to this person, they're going to figure that out. I think the most important thing to me about these monster hunting style encounters is it's up to the players to be clever and find ways to get an upper hand on the monster. They could just wait until nighttime and try to fight it, but that's not a good idea. You need to make that clear to them. Right. So, Maybe the thing is stronger at night? Well, maybe. I think just in general, the idea is without the mirrors, without knowing it shoots spines, without the NPC to distract it, this is going to be a hard fight. The monster would just wreck them. It's just like, no, pull them apart. No chance. But between not taking an, uh, uh, an attack... Because it sees somebody it recognizes, not hitting anybody with spines because I've climbed on roofs, um, seeing its reflection and being, you know, momentarily scared, maybe dazed. That those are all things the players are going to need to barely survive. Right is the tone. That's, That's it. that Witcher Three style where if you don't, if you're not prepared, it's not going to work. Exactly. And I think one of the most important things about this style of encounter building, everything we've said lines up with the mission statement. I want to build a combat encounter using a formidable monster that feels like Witcher Three. You may not use some of these pieces. They might never even touch the mirror thing. It might not even come into play. But you have that piece on the board if it comes up. Exactly. Move the pieces around. Um, Don't buy. Move the pieces around as needed. We're not suggesting you use every one of these things. Or, or railroad try to them. impose them on the player. Or no. say, all right, you guys can climb on the roof. Or you can tell this NPC what to do. Just let them figure all that stuff out. But you see, oh, they're gravitating towards this person. Oh, this town person. They're my, they're my, they're my, uh... They're my mango. They're my mango. They're my mango. Mango. So overall, I think that we set out to build an encounter, and because we got really excited, we built a session to some degree. Sort of, yeah. So I, that's okay, um, because, you know, just the encounter, but we wanted, we had to tie, you know, if we said in the encounter, there's an NPC that the people can order around without the context of their, you know, they know the monster, it... Didn't make sense. Yeah. It's, so that's it's kinda, the spillover of creating an encounter. The sometimes. important thing is we made sure to run it all through the filter of we want to make a combat encounter. Just like you said. We want to make a combat encounter that uses a formidable monster that feels like The Witcher 3. And even though we went way off the rails, as long as you do that, it's going to work. Right. And it's important to know that this, what we just described, depending on your group... There's no way I could see that going less than 40 minutes. That's an hour and a half encounter. Yeah, this is like the climax. Depending. Some groups might be like, would crush that in 20 minutes. Like they, but again, they're monster hunters, and they, but we want it to be a formidable monster. So make sure you pick a monster that is by itself. If they just go one-on-one, they get smashed. In they're particular, yeah. Like I said, sort of at the beginning, in particular, my idea for this monster hunting style of game is that, yeah, the, the encounter level is like twice the characters. Yes. Because you they have to do something to distract or do something to the monster so that it doesn't hurt them as much. Or, you know, basically, they, like you said, one-on-one, doesn't matter. They're not going to beat it. Um, so, what do we have so far? We've got these pieces, right? Yes. So, we have a little hamlet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Night. Uh, there's a well. There are some A-frame houses with trellises. There is a monster Mm -hmm. that is going to come at night. Um, This is going a little before, but in the, what we call the research phase of this this monster-style encounter, uh, the mayor has a secret. We're not sure what it is, but he is involved with the monster somehow. Yep. The monster is a a townsperson that possibly lived there before, or lives there now and transforms on a certain thing. Not, it's not werewolf, it's not lycanthropy, but it's something. Unless um, you want it to be. Unless you want it to be. Uh, There is a person that knows that person, probably involved with them eh, romantically. That would be my guess. Um, And that's sort of the setup for the final encounter, which is them fighting the monster. That's it. Those are the pieces that we're going to put there. Uh, We also want to do 
some skill checks in the combat. You can handle them however you want. We're, we're looking like strength or dex to make sure they're up on these roofs. Of, and, and make you can make the roofs rickety. Like, if you want to get crazy, depending on how uh, strong your players are, it's difficult to rain because it's straw. You know, I would say it should definitely be difficult to rain. Um, and depending on how you want to do it. I think the most important thing to take away from this is they can climb on the roof. That's the, that's the piece on the table. But um, you can decide later or to make it difficult terrain, to make it strong, to make it so that they can jump from one to the other. You don't have to plan all of those things, but as soon as a player says, hey, can I jump from one to the other? It's up to you to say, ah, oh, they're a little too far apart. Right. It's perfect. They're close enough that you can jump from one to the other. Your players are going to... F- you put the pieces out, your players are going to just fill it all in with cake icing. <laughs> That's it. And the, and the tone and feel is that as you put these pieces on the table, you get to dial the volume up of each one. The rooftops, if you want, like, ah, you know what? The tone of my group tonight, everyone's kind of feeling great. We all just saw Rogue One. Let's make it more action-packed. My thought process was it was going to be horror, but they're feeling like they want to kick down some doors and punch some jaws. So I'm going to dial up the action feel so I'm going to take away the difficult terrain rooftops. Exactly. They just get to run and jump and feel heroic. Or you dial up different elements. This is that tone and feel. Of all these pieces we put on the board, what do I need to do to move them around so that it feels the way I want it to feel? And so, um, yeah. I mean, just let us know how you use this stuff. What do um, you think? I do think there's one thing that we should cover. Do we tell. Didn't. I'm out, though. Me too. We didn't talk about the monster as far as stats. You know what? I don't, I don't think... Do you think it matters? Not specifically, but like we talked about, it needs to have a ton of HP. Like, it needs to be able to handle a Witch Bolt, a Battle Axe hit, and a... Gotcha. A couple Magic Missiles with no problem. So, let's like tell them why. If so, all of your players nail their best abilities, it needs to basically have shrug them off. Because you want the tone and feel to be that the monster is the screensaver on your... You want the tone and feel to be the monster is formidable. That was the word I was looking for. That's how you're trying to... So that's what you're doing. So you're it, making exactly. that choice to get We're the formidable deciding. tone and feel. Yeah. We're not deciding it needs to have 100 HP. We're deciding, hey, it depends on your players. If you know that your players just waltz through combat encounters because they're level 4 and they just got some of their coolest things at level 3 and the rogue's doing 76, you're like, all right, this thing needs to be way more formidable. Um, it's just important that it is way stronger than the players so that the combat encounter uh, sort of special things... Like the the, the environment climb. and the climb, that, all matter. that stuff is what makes them able to win. So that's the main things: is uh, the the monster is very smart. It is very strong. When it hits, it hits very hard, um, and it has an area of effect thing, so that you know, you want to try and make sure they get uh, maybe that's rush recharge. them up on the roof. You want to yeah, try recharge. to get them on the roof. Uh, maybe you need to recharge four or five or six, like something that's like, oh wow, is it going to do it this time? And it happens about half the time. Um, but right. it's not its attack. It's like, nah, this is a thing that happens, so, you know, you kind of need to... Right. And these are all pieces. Use them. How are you going to use them? What are you going to do? Um, but this is using tone and feel to build an encounter, running everything through the filter of the mission statement. How would you do this differently? What would you choose? Where did we mess up? Where do you disagree? What pieces would you have put on there? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, I think this will be cool. I'm curious to see how you guys run it, what you think. Is there anything else? No, I, I think that's it. And I will say more than anything, I think that this has really sort of broken down some walls. To me, this was Destroy Artifact for this monster hunting book because I was very stuck. I, I thought we had a really cool idea, but I was like really stuck. And I'm like, dude, we just murdered it. Like it, we really killed it. So I'm really excited about that. Awesome. Yeah, James is writing a book in his spare time on monster hunting and dragon run, and I'm like, go ye and do. <laughs> exactly. So this is huge for that. So Awesome. Well, grat, 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 scootsy. Until next time, may I do better and may your dice roll high.